Hi, Clint Coons here with Anderson Business Advisors. And in this video, we are going to discuss friendly liens or what some people call equity stripping. All right, let's get started. Okay, so I met this individual at an event last week and they came up to me after I got done presenting on the first day. And they said, oh, I understand the benefits of, of limited liability companies and why you should be setting them up to protect your properties. But you know, here's the thing I'm having a hard time with, Clint. I went to a different event at a local RIA where this presenter was telling us, you don't need to complicate your life with limited liability companies to protect your real estate. That there's a much simpler way. And all you have to do is file friendly liens on all of your properties. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the term, what it means is this you're gonna loan money to yourself and you're going to encumber all of your own real estate. It can't get any more friendlier than that, right? As long as you get along with yourself, you can put these deeds of trust or mortgages on your own property because of course you're not gonna foreclose on yourself if you forget to pay. And in many cases, you're never moving the money. Let me show you how the strategy works. So what these people will typically tell you to do is you have your properties right here. Let's say I have three properties. They'll tell you to set up a limited liability company over here. Now, this property here has $100,000 equity. This one here has $75,000 equity, and this one has $30,000 equity inside of it. They'll then tell you to add up all the equity here. That's $205,000. Then enter into a promissory note, line of credit agreement, with each of the, with, for each of these properties with yourself for $205,000. And in exchange for that, you agree to give that LLC a fir or first, or in this case, would be a second deed of trust because you have another lender in front of you uh, against each of these properties for 205K. So we'll put a 205K deed of trust there, 205K deed of trust here, 205K deed of trust there. So those are second deeds of trust that get recorded because the bank's standing in front, front of you. Now, in this particular property here that has 100K in equity, let's say its fair market value is 200K. This fair market value here is 150, and this one over here is 120. So if someone were looking, the, the whole premise behind this, this thought process of using this for asset protection is that if you get sued, right? Somebody comes after you and they sue you, and they wanna go after your assets, they're gonna see that your assets are fully encumbered. I mean, look at this one has 200,000, I mean 100,000 fair market value versus what your equity is. $100,000 that's owed to Wells Fargo and another 205 that's owed to this LLC. $305,000 debt on this one property that's only worth 200K. Oh, just leave it alone. It's not even worth going after. Or the second property here, same thing. It's got $275,000 in debt. You see where I'm going with this. So, so they're telling you is that it discourages people from wanting to take your properties. Now, there is some truth to that, that if a creditor is aggressive or coming after you and they're not an aggressive creditor, they may look at that and say, all right, we're not gonna touch you, we'll just let you off the hook and you're free to go. However, remember, you never actually loan the money here. So that deed of trust that gets recorded against the property only sticks to the amount of money that was actually transferred. So since you never loan the money, let's assume an aggressive creditor does come after you and they want to foreclose on this property and so they bring it to a sheriff's sale and it's sold and 200,000 is brought in. What's gonna happen in that scenario? You're gonna bring in 200K, 100K of that is gonna to go to pay Wells Fargo, who's the bank who loaned you the money to begin with. That's gonna leave $100,000 left over. So then what they're gonna do is they're gonna contact your LLC and they're gonna say, we see that you have a second deed of trust against this property for $205,000. How much is still outstanding under that? Now, this is your chance. You gotta either, you're either gonna commit fraud and you're gonna lie, perjury, or you're gonna tell them the truth. I'm telling you, tell them the truth. And you're gonna say zero. So they'll say, oh, great, so you don't know anything. Perfect, we just need to know that. So then yours is extinguished. They take that $100,000 and they give it to your creditor. And they're gonna do the same thing with the other properties as well. So if you had a $300,000 judgment against you, boom, boom, you've just lost all of your real estate. Now see, a lot of people who look at this, they that give you this types of strategies, they're only focused on one thing. They're focused on equity, right? I don't know why you invest, but I know that the equity is the icing on the cake for me. I invest for cash flow. Equity is great, and I, I want my properties to appreciate, but I'm looking for that mailbox money. I want that money coming in every month. And if I lose my properties, 
my standard of living is going to go down. So I want to make sure I'm protecting it. So that's a problem if you're relying upon this and you get an aggressive creditor, you're going to lose your properties. They're going to come after them. They're going to take them. You're going to lose your cash flow that came with that. And for many of us, that's an important aspect of investing or that is the aspect of investing. So that's the issue number one. Aggressive creditor can go actually go and foreclose and th that thing's just going to disappear because no money changed hands. Second issue you have, maybe they're not that aggressive. They're not going to go and try to foreclose on the property. Instead, what they'll do is they'll just record the judgment in the county where the properties are located. So if this creditor had a $300,000 judgment, it's going to attach to that one. It's going to attach to this one. It's going to attach to this one. So what is that doing for the creditor? Well, first off, it's going to grow at a 10% rate of interest, so it's making them money. But more importantly now, it's impaired your ability to do anything with that property. Now, you'll continue to collect the income and you'll continue to pay the mortgage down and build equity in the property, but eventually something's going to happen here. You want to sell the property, you want to refi the property, and when you want to do either of those two things, the bank, title, they're going to contact LLC. How much is owed under that note? Nothing. Okay, great, we don't need to deal with you. Then they're going to contact your creditor. How much is owed under your note? $300,000. I've never been paid. Oh, okay. And then they're going to pay that. So they're going to tie your property up, the non-aggressive creditor, just by filing the judgment in the county where the real estate's located. And so now what you've done by adopting this equity stripping friendly lien strategy is you put yourself in a vulnerable position where you've made sure that all of your assets are now at risk for one lawsuit. And when I'm talking about lawsuits, we're not only focused on the lawsuits that occur with our tenants, Lawsuits against you. Let's say you're driving down the road in the car, somebody in front of you stops short and you run into the back of them. Boom, you hit them, they sue you, they get judgment against you, down go your assets because you own them in your own name. And so the people that tell individuals to do this, engage in this type of strategy, in my experience, they're not attorneys. I mean, they heard something, read something, and they take one little piece of the puzzle and they go, oh, I've just had an aha moment. Don't do all the rest of this, just do this one component and you get all the asset protection. It's not true, it doesn't work that way. I'm not saying that you can't use this strategy. I actually think this is a valid strategy. I teach this as one of the asset protection techniques that real estate investors should consider when protecting their property. But it's used in conjunction with other entities, such as, in this case, you would use a limited liability company to protect your property like that. Now, what would happen if a lawsuit developed on outside, let's say we did that stop short, well, heck, you're protected, right? They can't take these LLCs if they're set up the right way from you. So you don't have to worry about outside liability anymore. So now we just cut our liability exposure in half by using LLC. So now we're just going to focus on the tenants that create issues. So now a tenant sues. They will just sue this LLC. So the only asset that is potentially exposed to harm is that one property. You see, with the friendly lien, we had all three properties exposed, but now we just limited it to one. So now we've cut our liability exposure by a third in my example. Now on top of that, if you wanted to use the friendly lien, which is something I do teach, if you have a lot of equity there, it makes sense. And here's why in this context, <clears throat> because now they're suing the LLC. And so here's an attorney coming after it. They only know there's only one property rather than three properties they can go after. So that's gonna diminish their aggressiveness and, and looking for low hanging fruit. So if they see that that property is encumbered by $100,000 with Wells Fargo, a second with this no-name LLC out of Wyoming for $205,000, they may tell their client, listen, they've offered their policy limits as settlement. We can continue to fight, but it's not going to get us anywhere because the guy's underwater on this property. What do you want to do? Most people are going to say, let's just settle. I'd rather take my money now than spend it all on attorney's fees. So you can use that as a settlement uh, a negotiation technique. Again, it doesn't have any valid effect because if they did go against it, you never loan the money so you don't have any asset protection. Now, sometimes people do actually loan the money. And great, if you did loan the money, then you're going to be protected to the extent that you actually move the money from here to that LLC to support that line of credit and that deed of trust that's filed. So it's a smokescreen. Uh, it does work. We do set those up uh, on occasion for people who want to engage in this, but it should not be your only asset protection structure or you're just leaving way too many assets in your own name and you're one lawsuit away from risking it all. Want to learn more? Definitely come by our three-day tax and asset protection event. I hope you've learned something here about how to use friendly liens with your investing.